without fear, which is a good beginning when you're going against a fighter of the quality of Little Red Lopez. Castagnon faces one tremendous obstacle. He is at an eight-inch reach disadvantage. Quickly, let me acquaint you with the scoring rules. This, by the way, will be Lopez's sixth title defense. Scoring is on the 10-point must system. The three-knockdown rule has been waived. Mandatory eight count, no saving by the bell. We have an 18-and-a-half-foot ring. It's a decent-sized ring, enough for any boxer to maneuver. But Castagnon is not the boxing type. He is easy to hit, as is Lopez. Both men can punch. So we're about ready. The fight is incidentally as Little Red is introduced. The crowd rises as one. Remember, he was born in Utah, fought to shame to be precise. And this is their fighter. In the manner of his older brother, who never became a champion, Ernie Indian Red Lopez. The instructions. The referee, by the way, will be Carlos Padilla. You see him in the middle there, and this is a fine referee. Many of you fight fans will remember that Padilla was indeed the third man in the ring in the thriller in Manila. Ali against Frazier, third and last time around. Now they're getting the instructions, which are not going out over the public address system. The two judges are Dell Markham and F.J. Cajon, both local men appointed by the, Nevada, uh, the Utah State Boxing Commission, ahead of which is a man named Dean Smith. But you sports fans all over the country will recognize one name on that Utah State Commission. Vern Gardner, as you look at Gaston Young's record there, which I'd already detailed for you. Vern Gardner, the great star at the University of Utah in basketball back in 1947. He's on the Utah Commission. The fight's underway. Gaston Young's task to get to Lopez in the face of Lopez's superior reach. Remember? You saw Gaston Young connect with a left and a right. Little Red, habitually a slow starter. Knocked down in an early round 12 times in his fights, but a tremendous puncher who gets off the floor. 39 victories, three losses, 36 of those victories via the knockout route. Brisk action, good exchanges, a good right right there by Castagnon. He is, as I said, unafraid. He took a good left, but he comes right back. And he is getting to Lopez, and this is the first round. With a minute, 55 seconds left to go. Very aggressive. The smaller Spaniard is. A caution there from Carlos Padilla, the referee from the Philippines. Very qualified international referee. This oh, that right hurt Castagnon. Jolted him backwards. In the meantime, the smaller man, in terms of height and reach, continues to fight his way like an alley fighter, a street fighter, while a brawler got hurt by a left again. Lopez with that lithe, angular body, very tall for his weight classification. One of the most punishing punches for his poundage I have ever seen. This is first round action. And look at Castagnon with Lopez in the corner against the ropes. Castagnon keeps coming after him. There's no warning for action here. 20 seconds left in the first round. Staying, we're not leaving. You just watched a red hot first round. 
And if you get a look at Lopez's back, you will see a bandage on it, and you will also see some blood on his back. You see, he has rope burns. I don't really understand these strands here in this Salt Palace ring, because when I measured off the ring and tested the strands, I was struck by the fact that they could almost instantly cause rope burns on a fighter. Doesn't make sense. They're using Reyes gloves, as you look there at Castagnon, who was so aggressive in the first round. Here's some of that first round action now. Castagnon was impressive in terms of his aggressiveness and his fearlessness. He scored well with the right on a number of occasions, but Lopez jolted him backwards with the right and then hurt him with the left. This is second round action. We're coming to you live from the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City, Utah. Castagnon with his back to you. When you see Lopez with his back to you, you'll see the birds I talked about. Castagnon somehow, despite the absence of reach, getting the right in there. See the patch on Lopez's back and then up by the right shoulder on the back. Burns I discussed and the touch of blood. Lopez now listening to the dictates of his corner, trying to go to the body. But look at little Castagnon, keeps coming after. Padilla separates them. And then suddenly that immense power. The gloves touched by referee Padilla. Lopez now coming on for the kill. Castagnon playing into his hands. He must hold. But no, he gives him punching room. Castagnon coming right back at him. See the time in the low right hand corner of your screen. This is second round action. We've had one knockdown. It came after a whole flurry of blows in the second round, registered by Little Red Lopez against Roberto Castagnon. Give him credit for guts, Castagnon. Foolhardiness to be sure, but he's a gutsy little fella. Cover up now, trying to move. Stay out of range. That's better from his point of view. He took it then. Lopez counterpunching with a powerhouse right. And another right. And right above us, Castagnon pinioning Lopez against those ropes. Counting down toward the end of round two. Castagnon can survive this one. It's over. It is over in the second round. As the second round ran out, no saving by the bell, by the way. And Danny Little Red Lopez, in about as quick a fight as you could want to see, scores his 37th knockout, his 40th victory against only three losses. I'll tell you this. For a round and a half, that little Castagnon showed you about as much guts as you would ever want to see. And we're going to have to break for a commercial, but then we'll be right back here, live at ringside, the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City.